As you know, my first book, The Upsider, came out in 1956. And I suppose you could say that it was a book about existentialism. That is to say, it was a problem, the basic meaning of human existence. Most of the existentialist philosophers of that time, like Sartre and Camus, felt that human life was absolutely, totally meaningless. In the year The Upsider came out, I met Albert Camus in Paris, and uh, we were talking about his work and the fact that <clears throat> although he also subscribes to this view that human life is totally meaningless, nevertheless, um, Camus has certain moments in his work in which the characters experience some intensity greater than ordinary consciousness. For example, at the end of his book, L'Etranger, the, the Foreigner, looking out at the stars, he experiences a sudden overwhelming sense of total affirmation, and he said, suddenly I knew that I'd been happy, and I was happy still. And yet, throughout the whole course of the book, he seems to be absolutely bored stiff. How can you, in fact, be happy and not know it? Well, the truth is, of course we can. They're all the time looking back on some past experience and thinking, my God, wasn't that a happy time? When, you know, you didn't notice at the time it was any happier than usual. I pointed out to Camus that there are about six different places in his work in which the character is suddenly overwhelmed by this tremendous experience of meaning. And I said, how can you say that life is meaningless if, in fact, you feel these tremendous intensities? And Camus pointed out of the window of the office of Gallimard's at a sort of Parisian teddy boy who was slouching past, and said, no, what is good um, for him must be good for me, and vice versa. In other words, if a Parisian teddy boy can't understand it, then somehow he cannot accept it. And I got very indignant and said, supposing Einstein had said that about the theory of relativity. I can't create relativity because a Parisian teddy boy wouldn't understand it. And yet, nevertheless, what he was saying was what all the existentialists were saying, that you must stick to the earth and to the ordinary things of everyday life and then see if you can get your meaning from them. So this is basically what the outsider was about. These people who get sudden deep, intense flashes of meaning and suddenly think, my God, it is true, there is something more meaningful about human existence, and then it goes again, and they wake up the next morning and think, well, how did I mean by all that? Where's it gone? It seems to me that in a sense we know the answer to that. We used to, in England, have electricity meters where you put a shilling in the meter to get your electricity. Life fails, in a sense, because you've forgotten to put a shilling in the meter. You've let your inner self get low. And so there's a hollow inside you where there should be something solid. Now, around about this time, this was 1958, I got a letter from an American professor of psychology called Abraham Maslow. Maslow had read a book of mine called The Age of Defeat. I had said in this book that the trouble with modern literature for the past century has been that the hero is always defeated. We have an underlying feeling of pessimism and defeat. Maslow had been very interested in this, and what he said in this letter to me was that, as a psychologist, he got sick of studying sick people because sick people talked about nothing but their sickness. He decided instead to find the healthiest people he could possibly find and study them instead. And what he found was something that no one had ever discovered before because no one had ever bothered to study healthy people. He found that all healthy people had with great frequency what he called peak experiences. Such experiences of bubbling overwhelming happiness. And he realized that this is absolutely a general truth for people who, to a large extent, drive themselves quite happily and contentedly at a high level. This is the basic question. You've got to keep on reminding yourself all the time. I tend to do this at unexpected times, but particularly when I'm feeling rather tired. When I'm feeling tired, if I can remind myself in the right way, quite instantly, you go into the condition of intensity. I find this tremendously important if I'm on a very long trip. Last year I had to go to Melbourne, and it, the trip took 39 hours. They sent me in the slowest possible way. And during the whole of this time, I managed to keep myself up at a very, very high level, merely by, in a way, contemplating the fact that free will does exist. Terry Waite had just been let out of his prison in Beirut, where he'd been chained to a radio for two years. I kept saying, well, you know, this aeroplane is really a great deal better than being chained to a radiator in Beirut. <laughs> and instantly woke up this sort of inner being and kept it on a high level all the way to Melbourne.